Over the years, society has become increasingly subject to the dangers by which children are threatened at even the youngest ages by authority figures. Many being victims of sexual abuse before they reach the age of 18, thus causing serious damage to their emotional well-being even as adults. Due to this, further research has been conducted to prevent this from happening and to provide support for those victims. However, most of the investigations focus mostly on women and overlook that men are also part of the victim. Good afternoon, my name is Sebastian Elgato. Alfredo Martinez, Justin Medina, and Marisol Gonzalez. Like Sebastian said, it is clear that sexually abused boy victims is less common than girl victims. However, since most of the attention has been placed on females, the effects must not be overlooked on males. As you can see in the upper portion of the visual, one in four girls is sexually abused before the age of 18. But boys aren't far behind, as on the bottom portion of the visual, one in six boys is sexually abused before the age of 18. That is only an 8% difference between the two. If abuse of females is becoming an increasing topic in society, and males aren't far behind, what does that say about abuse when it comes to male victims? Furthermore, abuse comes with multiple ramifications, which brings us to our research question. Since the late 1900s, to what extent has childhood sexual abuse affected the mental health of male victims in America before turning the age of 18? After conducting our research, we concluded that male, adult males in America who have been sexually, sexually abused as children in the late 1900s developed develop mental health issues due to their abuse experiences. David Lysak, former professor of psychology at the University of Massachusetts and the author of The Psychological Impact of Sexual Abuse, stated that certain adaptations of improvement as a teen seen in males were sexually assaulted as children. For example, shame, anger, and guilt. These systematic measures were used to explain the prevalence of sexual abuse. The graph shows characteristics that are commonly shown in, in males who were sexually, in sexual abuse victims. Nine males had female perpetrators and nine males had, per had male perpetrators. Out of the 18 sexual assault victims, 14, 14 felt masculinity issues, 14 experienced self-blame, and 11 felt shame as a result of, this, of their assaults. This shows that more than half of, them, half of the victims experienced a change in character after their assault. We concluded that males are less likely to report their abuse due to, due to fear, shame, and the stigma of homosexuality. Moreover, psychologists argue that there is a relationship between sexual abuse and mental illnesses. Bob Balfour and Michelle Lowe claim that repeated trauma caused by ongoing sexual abuse or, victim, or victimization experiences that occur at different times through life create a prolonged and profound set, set of problems that affect the mental health and well-being of, of male victims. Self-harm, substance abuse, depression, and personality disorders are some examples of, of mental illnesses that repeated trauma can cause. Substance abuse and self-harm are proven to be near-to-death experiences that were alternative coping mechanisms for when males had a lack of emotional support. In addition to what my viewer Yasmin just, just stated, men who are abused as children and become fathers tend to have concerns regarding their role as parents. They fear that others may think that they will become abusers of their own children and tend to be driven by the shame of being judged and the stigma that is put on them. Mira Dio, a graduate assistant and researcher from Missouri State University, states that this fear of becoming a perpetrator negatively impacts their, their desire of starting a family, since they fear that upon this culture, family, friends, and strangers will wonder if they are perpetrators against their own children. This shows to be detrimental to their emotional well-being as they are affected by a recurring worry making them more aware of their childhood sexual experiences and the opinions of others. And it, it, it also keeps them from opening about their views, the public opinion, and open, which maintains male childhood sexual abuse to remain unreported and untreated. Moreover, abuse has been found to have a variety of mental health problems. Therefore, abuse uh, men who have been abused and develop an unstable mental health and do not with trauma are more likely to become abusers. The data displayed in the graph compares the existing pattern that exists between being a, perpetrate, a victim and becoming a perpetrator among female and male victims. 
However, we can see that only a small percentage of female victims actually became a perpetrator, thus confirming that the, that the likability of becoming an offender is mostly a concern among male victims. All in all, there is a direct relationship between mental health and sexual abuse. In the article, Juvenile Sex Offenders, a Complex Population by Johan Garden, who is the Director of Clinical Operations of Mental Health at Centurion Hospital, explains how there have been some studies that have demonstrated that both paraphilic and non-paraphilic adult sex offenders have relatively high rates of comorbid psychiatric disorders. This evidence makes clear that both sexual offenders and abusers have high rates of mental illnesses that can affect them. Due to this, no, clearly, sorry, clearly abuse stems into mental illness because if an abuser has a mental illness and abusers are the cause of sexual abuse, this therefore links the two negatively impacting male victims. Thank you, Sebastian. Furthermore, childhood trauma affects the survivors and adulthood. According to Francis Grossman from the peer-reviewed academic journal, relational challenges and recovery processes in male survivors of childhood sexual abuse identified a number of persistent barriers that male victims created for the ability to develop relationships and continue to struggle with the relationships they did have, particularly with emotional expression and intimate relationships. Many of the men's descriptions of the relationships as adults illustrated the ways they had felt isolation in childhood that carried through to their adult lives. According to one of the survivors, he stated, all of the trusted figures around me either vanished or abused me in some way. And, and I can't trust them, and therefore I got to do this myself. Building a protective shell, that is how I survived, Mark. Moreover, some solutions to heal, the, to heal the survivors from the abuse include the following. Provide adequate counseling, create support groups for the victims, and to create education programs for the abusers. Initially, providing adequate counseling for the abused boys and their families is a great way for them to prevent negative mental health. When people, especially young boys, get into the act of counseling, they will start to understand their mental health, which is a great way for them to cope with the trauma they've, ha they've had in the past. Secondly, creating support groups for the victims is a great opportunity for them to disclose their feelings. And when these shared experiences in a support group, this tends to this tends to ease their emotions and sense of isolation. Finally, creating education programs for specifically the abusers instead of the victims is a great way to inform the abusers about the laws and social consequences that come with the abuse and therefore can, um, can, can prevent the likelihood of abuse in the future. Like Marisol said, there are many solutions to help male victims with mental health issues and to stop um, sexual abuse. However, with these solutions come multiple limitations. Our first limitation, as you can see, is that male victims tend to remain silent. Nowadays in our society, males think that it's uncharacteristic and hurts their masculinity to express how they feel. However, it defeats the purpose of counseling if a male victim doesn't open up and express their feelings. Our second limitation you can see is that support groups take longer to see results. This is because a support group is not an individual treatment. Rather, it has multiple people where you express your feelings. Our third and final limitation is that education programs are not enforced enough by the government. Since they're not enforced enough, abusers will continue to abuse more people without, without looking at the repercussions. Thank you for the question you have. Um, all right, Sebastian, let's start with you. Sebastian, how did the group decide to include Marisol's perspective in the overall presentation? Well, actually, we came together as a group and we collaborated that we weren't going to um, include Marisol IRR in the presentation. Her being, her perspective being organizations and how the environment affects the uh, male victims. We didn't decide to include this because most, most of our uh, presentation was based on the psychology, psychology uh, of male victims. 
and the organizations of how the environment impacted Mill Creek. All right, thank you. Fabiana, give me, um, give one example of the way you think that your thinking changed as a result of Jessamine's paper. After reading Jessamine's paper, I realized the way that abuse males were affected directly since her perspective focused on the abuse males and how they felt by the trauma as she stated that they developed depression, um, low self-esteem, and even self-harm, which make, make me understand how they were affected psychologically. All right, thank you. Ms. Diaz. Uh, what is an example of a compelling... Nope, can't do that one, sorry. We have to change because Sebastian kind of answered that question. We're gonna go to this one. Sorry about that. Ms. Diaz, describe an argument from one of your peers' individual reports that makes you think differently about the team's solution. Um, so Fabiana's, Fabiana's perspective revolved around how um, parents and the family members were affected by the abuse and the trauma that they went through. And so we concluded that Thank you. And Marisol, what is a way in which your team's resolution makes you think differently about your own research? So uh, the psychology definitely uh, impacted the male victim. So if you, if we, if we can fix how the male victims felt after the abuse, for example, like they would treat their depression and their anxiety and even self-harm, it could definitely, um, it can help, the, help them in the future, especially adults, so they don't have to carry their um, depression in the future. You guys are done?